guys, it is Nathan here, aka the Rambling Kern and head instructor of Kern School of Combat. So a recent question came up on one of the pages that I'm a member of about what did a faction fighter look like. So for those who don't know, there was a period in Ireland where um, events called faction fights took place. Now there was a huge range of reasons as to why these took place and that's going to be a topic for another video in itself. But needless to say, um, that is where our traditional forms of Irish stick fighting come from. Um, is from many of the practitioners who learned to use sticks during these times. So numerous weapons were outlawed in Ireland uh, at the time under the penal laws. So many people result or resorted to using sticks because you could uh, carry them. So as I said, one of the questions came up of how would you dress in order to look like a faction fighter? Now in recent years there has almost become a uniform for many people who wish to look like faction fighters or dress like uh, Irish stick fighters and it's usually a waistcoat shirt and a peak cap kind of as I jokingly say the kind of peaky blinders outfit now this basically comes from around the 1920s this style and is primarily associated with England um, in more recent years it's become somewhat linked to Ireland uh, just mainly due to media uh, films and TV and that sort of thing the faction fighters would have looked nothing like that. So many of them would have been 18th and 19th century Irish people and would have worn the fashion in Ireland of that time. So generally, um, basically, I'll bring up images of that so that you can see them. Um, but these outfits and the, these, this clothing would have looked nothing really like what many people associate faction fighters with today. So. It's kind of important to understand that culturally there is quite a significance to these outfits in Ireland. As I mentioned in one of my previous videos as to why we didn't hear so much about Irish stick fighting in Ireland and why many Irish people are not uh, aware of it, a big part of that is that many um, cultures outside of Ireland, especially England, uh, and even in the Americas, very much vilified Irish people at the time. Um, and kind of very much looked down upon them. And as a result, the fashions, the styles, the clothing, all became viewed as something that, for want of a better term, a, a savage would wear. So often these appeared in characters such as punch cartoons and these outfits essentially became almost caricatures of Irish people later on. As we can see by the stereotypical dress of a leprechaun, if you see any sort of um, depiction of leprechauns that would actually be a closer representation to what a faction fighter would look like compared to many of the current depictions that we see of them uh, being done through modern media and um, of course those outfits now have as I said certain cultural weight to them so I'll bring up some images we'll discuss them um, and I mean if people have any questions on this please do let me know so the first thing to consider when we're talking about faction fighting and faction fighters is the periods within which they took place. So that is the mid to late 1700s into the mid to late 1800s. And these are the periods you need to look at if you wish to look at the dress of that time. So here we actually have an Irish stick maker, um, most likely from the mid to late 1800s. As you can see here, very traditional style of clothes that would have been very common across these periods breeches, jacket, a waistcoat, and a hat. And these were kind of the most common sort of attire that you would expect to see people wearing at this time. You know, next up we have a picture of a potential faction fighter. So as you can see, this gentleman is wearing a pretty standard set of clothes, uh, very similar to the last picture, with a hat, breeches, waistcoat, and a jacket. Um, so these are much more the common sort of attire that you would expect to see in these periods. Uh, obviously the main difference here is this gentleman looks a little bit more disheveled. So I thought this was a very useful picture to include because obviously this gives you a very good indication of the sort of clothes of the period. But also it's nice to see the ladies attire of the period as well because women did actually take part in faction fights. So it is quite important to highlight both sides of this. So as you can see again the gentleman wearing a long jacket, breeches, waistcoat and the gentleman on our left or their right wearing a a shorter top hat. 
So these are much closer to the uh, clothing styles that we would expect to see during these periods. And these slowly became a, quite a quintessential style of Irish fashion with a particular style of coat and waistcoat uh, being worn. Um, but as you can see, this is kind of the running theme uh, across the period and is much more akin to what we should expect to see if we were to show what a faction fighter is. Right, so next up, this image is a little bit earlier at 1833, but there's a few important things to note here. Obviously, the clothing is still somewhat similar. You still have the top hats, the jackets, um, and the breeches. However, you will see a lot of people here wearing shirts. Um, now, this is something that you would come to expect at a brawl, but, al but also a few interesting notes in this picture. As you can see, the women in the bottom right-hand side of the image. And also interesting to note the way these people are depicted. So it is something that you would see, obviously, in a masked brawl, where people would um, strip down in order to fight better. Um, however, the fashion here, as you can see, is still quite similar. And as you can see in this image here again, something that we see throughout is the breeches, the shirt, and the hat. Quite a wide range of hats visible in this one. But as you can see, this is the sort of fashion that we would expect of the period. Um, and this is the way that you would expect uh, people to be depicted. Some of the interesting things here, though, in these images is the kind of negative kind of way in ways in which people were depicted. And that is why I chose also to include this image, which is one of the few images to really depict Irish faction fighters in a more irreverent tone. And as you can see in this one, in the left-hand side of the fighter, you can see people wearing their finery, basically. And the one thing that people uh, kind of misconceive when it comes to the faction fights is that many of these took place at fair days, um, which were basically the you know highlight of the calendar year for a lot of people. So often people would have been wearing their best finery and their best clothes and carrying their nicest stick, you know, and that's where those fights would have broken out. So often this is the sort of clothes you would expect to see people wearing but it would have been the best that they had now this image is one that became very famous and it is a very important one to include because it is one of those images that it was used to portray that negative stereotype of the irish drunken fighter and these sort of images were often what was used to really drive home that stereotype for Irish people and I think is one of the reasons why this period is so ignored by many Irish historians because of those negative connotations that were placed on Irish people at the time. But again, interesting things to note here is the same clothing still visible. The same sort of uh, style of top hat, the jacket, the waistcoat and the breeches. So these were very much the clothing that you would have expected to see Irish people wearing at the time and there were particular styles that Irish um, began to develop around these times. So this is much more the depiction that you would expect to see if you were thinking of a faction fighter. And that brings me on to this image, which is an important one to include. And as you can see, the clothing is very much the same as the others. But this is one of the few images, well, one of the only images of a faction fighter in a book on Irish dick fighting, shown in a Irish dick fighting stance. Um, so this one is in a larger book on uh, other types of uh, fencing and use of the stick. However, this is little section is about Irish dick fighting and shows this Irish dick fighter. And as you can see, this hat that he's wearing, uh, this kind of uh, shallow top hat, this is very much the style of Irish hat that was very popular at the time. And it is also the one that then became to be used for the depiction of leprechauns, etc. And that's kind of why I made that reference earlier, that that is a much closer style and was often one used to degrade Irish people, which is why there's so much negativity wrapped around that image. Which brings me on to this final image. So this is a um, somewhat well-to-do farmer. And this picture, while outside of the era, era of uh, faction fighting, is done in 1890. And this is what became the stereotypical image of the Irish um, peasantry, basically. And while the clothing at all is very accurate, this is kind of what became known internationally of that style. 
um, and this is how it was portrayed. Now, as I said, there's a lot of negative connotations wrapped up in um, this era, so it is kind of something to consider with this stuff as well. But if we want to portray Falcon fighters in a correct way and want to know how they looked, the series of images I've shown you is a really great place to start. Well, guys, I do hope you enjoyed that. Um, it's nice to have a few images and a few drawings and a bit of artwork and stuff that we can look through and actually get a bit of a reference for what Faction Fighters would have looked like. Now, obviously, this period has span uh, a few years, but it is important to note that the kind of peaked cap and tweed waistcoat that we kind of have come to associate with Faction Fighters is very much not at all what they would have been wearing. Um, I mean, in some cases, you're talking like 50 to 100 plus years um, out of place, which would essentially be like me trying to show up like someone dressed in the Titanic wearing this hoodie and carrying an iPhone. Like It, it, it is that out of place. Um, and not only is it out of place, but it's also culturally not even really linked to Ireland. So one thing that I always highlight with this stuff is that a lot of the fashion of this period is actually very catching and very, at least to me, uh, very impressive to look at. So it's something that I think has been vilified, like I mentioned in the past, and it was something that I would love to see kind of recaptured and reclaimed and repurposed, and something that Irish people should be proud of. And like I've said before, that is a big aim for myself with this channel and for the content that I put out. So, just a few things to keep in mind. Um, if you're looking to depict a faction fighter, as I say, look at the imagery, there is plenty of it there, um, and hopefully, this video will help as a bit of a guide towards people. Um, trying to do that. Now if you have any questions or comments um, please leave them below. Please do like and share. Um, a lot of big projects coming this summer and I really uh, appreciate all the help we can get. Really want to try and reach um, a thousand before a thousand subscribers before we hit summer so um, any help uh, I really do appreciate and as usual like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I really appreciate the help everyone and um, have a lovely week. Slong.